best way to introduce uh, this paper, the idea that's behind it. So the paper's called Contracts as Reference Points, and that actually tells you quite a bit about what, what it's about. Reference points are very important. So let's stick with our 2010 example, okay? And let's be concrete. Imagine we're talking about a musical evening that I'm arranging at my house, and I want you to sing, okay? And the musical evening is going to be worth 20 to me, and the effort cost of your, of your performing is 10. Okay, so everything here is measured in money. You assume that they're monetary equivalents to that cost. Now, let's suppose, just for the moment, I'm going to ignore the fact that I could engage other singers than you. Uh, that's, that's actually going to be important later. But for the moment, uh, ignore that and ignore the fact that you could perform elsewhere on the night in question. So we're just sort of stuck with each other. Now, earlier I argued that we might agree to trade at a price of 15, to split the difference. In that discussion, I implicitly assumed that once we agreed on the price, trade would proceed smoothly. I now want to depart from that, okay? I want to that actually, each of us has some discretion about the quality of performance we provide. And I put quotes around performance because here I'm going to, it's obvious what we mean by you performing since you're singing, but what about me, am I performing? Uh, no, but I am performing, yes I am, because um, there are things I can do to make the experience, your experience more or less Pleasant. So that's basically what I mean by the quality of performance. It's things we can do that make the experience more or less pleasant for our trading uh, partner. Okay, so basically, um, I want to imagine that you can perform with the letter rather than the spirit of the contract. Uh, or you can stint on quality, cut back on quality. So, um, we're talking about singing. Um, I'm you know, going to have this evening, they're going to be guests. Uh, you can be rude to them if you're not feeling in the mood, or you can refuse to give autographs, or just hang around and, and chat and talk about uh, all the signals you know, and that kind of stuff that they love to hear, you can just refuse to do that. I can quibble about the details of your performance, uh, or I can be slow in pain, I can be rude to you, various things I can do too. I want to assume it's symmetric. And you can each be more or less pleasant to the other party. Now, to use the language of the paper, the language we use is, uh, we talk about the functionary or consumer performance. Now, even, uh, you know, you're uh, Turkish, I assume most of you, but uh, even when I give this in, in the US or the UK, people I find those words puzzling, so, um, but they, I, so perhaps we shouldn't have used them, but we did. Perfunctory means basic, it just means that's within the, the letter of the contract. Consummate means that you really go the extra uh, foot or yard to, to make the experience more pleasant for the other person. Now, the thing is, by introducing this idea that uh, people have some discretion about the quality of performance, um, we are departing from uh, the standard literature in this area, which assumes that although it may be very hard to write contracts ahead of time, so there's this uh, large incomplete contracting literature, which is based on the idea that good contracts are hard to write because the future is hard to foresee. But the typical assumption made is that once you get, once the future arrives, you can write a perfect contract. Here, we're departing from that in what we're assuming is that um, the singer can choose to be friendly or less friendly to the guests, and no judge can ever really check on that. I mean, the judge can check, if you went to court afterwards, uh, the judge could check whether the singer's turned up, whether he or she opened their mouth and sang various songs, but whether they were uh, throwing themselves into it 
that's not something that you can, you know, that's going to be a matter of opinion. It's too costly to ever determine that. And, and equally, whether uh, I'm right to the, uh, to the singer, whether I manage to find some food for them, or say, oh, so sorry, the guest have eaten it all. You know, this is the kind of thing uh, which is, is hard to enforce in a court of law for the judge to, to check whether there really was food left over or whether I was just seeing so these are, these are the kind of things which go under the radar screen, um, which uh, we, we're going to assume that they're always there and that those are the discretionary things. Now, we then make some assumptions about what determines whether someone is willing to go the extra yard, the extra mile, to provide a consumer performance. And here, we appeal quite loosely to a number of ideas from the behavioral economy. Um, we take the view that providing consumer performance, the good stuff, doesn't cost you a significant amount. Okay, so being polite or rude to somebody, uh, it's not that you are, uh, it costs you to be polite. <coughs> it may even be nice. You may be the polite kind of person. You actually may prefer to be polite to people. Um, we can assume that you're sort of roughly indifferent between being polite and not being polite consummate and perfunctory uh, performance. Okay, so have in mind you're basically indifferent. But that the other party cares a lot. Okay, so if I'm uh, rude to you, uh, it really does, or if I'm rude to your guests, uh, it's not that I gain a lot, but, but you lose a lot because your guests don't enjoy the evening. Okay, since you're on the margin, then, then of course the big question is what determines which way you go? And the answer is we assume that you will be willing to be, I'll use this polite example, because I think it's a reason why, um, you'll be willing to be polite if you feel well treated, but not if you feel badly treated. So this is uh, called negative reciprocity, and there's a lot of evidence for it in the behavioral literature. But we go on, and this is where, this is, this is where uh, the assumption uh, really uh, is different from what you, you, you won't find this in the behavioral literature, this is peculiar to uh, what I want, the way I want to think about contracts. We're going to suppose that whether a party feels well treated or not depends on whether he gets what he believes he's entitled to, and that a contract is a reference point, a reference point for entitlements. So any contract that we've written circumscribes what people feel entitled to. And that people think of the contract as fair, and they only they judge whether they're being well treated relative to the contract. So the contract is a reference point. They don't expect to be treated better than what the contract says. But within the contract, if the contract allows for several possibilities, the two of us may have very different feelings about what we're entitled to, which outcome we're entitled to. Okay. So I'm going to uh, explain this, you'll see uh, just in a few minutes exactly what I mean by this. So let's go to our 2010 example, and let's put in a timeline. So imagine that we meet at date zero, and then the musical evening is going to take place at date one, that might be six months later. And basically the reason we have the timeline is, is I want to assume that we do meet uh, before the concert, not just the night before, we can meet several months. And in fact, uh, what I want to assume is that when we meet, we each have alternatives. So um, I'm now dropping the assumption I made a few minutes ago that it, it, it's just the two of us. Uh, at date zero, you can imagine that there are many singers I can approach. I come to you, but if, if negotiations break down with you, I can go to someone else. You also have many uh, evening, have many places where you can sing six months from now. So you, we both have lots of alternatives. Think of a competitive market at that point. But then what we're going to do is we're going to sign a contract, and then we're sort of obliged to, to work with each other. That's the basic idea. Now, OK, I want to start with a case which is um, a little strange, which is imagine we wrote a contract, and we just decided, 
But we didn't decide on the price. We didn't decide on how much I'm going to pay. <coughs> I mean, in principle, we could uh, do that. We could agree that you will sing at this musical evening in six months' time. And we could agree as part of the contract that the day, the night before the concert, we will negotiate how much I'm going to pay you. It doesn't seem like a sensible way to do business. Uh, and I will show, indeed, that it isn't according to the assumptions of this uh, theory that I'm now describing. But I, just to, you know, we do need to know why that wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, so let's, let's understand why it wouldn't be. Basically, I want to take the point of view that if we don't specify the price, then that means the price can be anywhere between 10 and 20. Uh, we know it, I'm never going to be willing to pay more than 20 because I prefer not to have, you know, the night before the concert, I prefer to just say it's not worth it because it's only worth 20 to me. I just cancel it. And I can never <coughs> expect to pay you less than 10 because you, the night before the concert, would say, you know what, I, I won't bother to sing. So the price is going to be somewhere between 10 and 20. Now, according to the contracts as reference points idea, so what I'm saying is if we, if we write a contract at date zero, which leaves open the price, it's like writing a contract which says the price can be anywhere between 10 and 20. It's like having a price range. I want to take the point of view that we can have different views about what we're entitled to. You, as a singer, can think, well, you know, I'm a great singer. And, uh, you know, I'm one of the world's best singers. And this concert, if it's going to be a success, it's going to be entirely because of me. That means you. And therefore, you may feel entitled to the highest possible price, 20. I don't have quite as positive a view of your musical talents. And I think that this evening is a success because the very thing, the various things I've done and so I actually think I shouldn't have to pay you any more than 10. I'm realistic enough to know that I can't get away with less because you won't sing. But I don't think you're worth any more than 10. Okay, so we have these widely different views. Now, we're rational enough to agree on some price between 10 and 20, let's say 15. However, each of us feels shortchanged or agreed. I think I've paid five too much and you think you've received five too little. Now, according to the theory, so let me go back to what I said, what, which was that um, what determines whether I'll provide consumer performance or you'll provide consumer performance? The answer is it, it all depends on whether 